This is a friendly battle between me commanding the Edusian Kingdom and William from the Sacred Band Clan commanding the Boyai. And you might think, well, what is the Boyai going to do against the Edusian Kingdom and vice versa? Well, the Boyai would seemingly have all the advantages in this matchup. Seemingly. Um, I'm not. I think that um, the Edusian Kingdom has a good chance against. Um, against uh, the Boyai. So, my build consists of uh, four Thracian nobles in the center, two Thracian warriors on the flanks, and the reason why I've brought this amount of Thracians is because I'm confident there won't be any missile cavalry or good skirmishers from the Boyai. So they have the Celtic Slingers, sure, but they don't have the elite skirmishers that can wreck your Thracians in seconds. I have two, uh, three Thracian skirmishers, so these are not Thracian peltasts, these are only skirmishers. These are for general sniping. Then I have four Thracian horse, these are only there to tie down the uh, heavy horse of the Boyai. Then I have two Thracian cavalry on each flank. The Boyai army consists of four Celtic slingers, oath sworn general, uh, two axe warriors on each flank, I believe, or one axe warrior on each flank. Six sword followers, uh, spear warriors, two levy freemen, and four heavy horse. That's it. So I'm not sure about bringing the axe warriors against um, against the Adrician Kingdom. I think Celtic warriors would be a lot better, more cost effective. The reason why I have deployed like this is because I want to um, dissuade any frontal cavalry charges. So any cavalry that comes in here, I'm just going to send in my Thracian horse and then pepper them with 41 missile damage Thracian skirmishers, and it's going to be a bad exchange for them. So over here I'm going to start skirmishing on the Axe Warriors. Not the most important target, because they are going to die to most of what I have, but just to, just to do some damage and put some pressure on the Boyai. These units, I'm not going to try to engage here, because this is the shielded side of the enemy army. So I only want to keep these he guys here as a threat. And then I want to use these uh, Thracian cavalry to try to bait some uh, javelins like that, but it was a bit too slow. And I want to keep doing the damage to his axe warriors. So obviously he's going to push up and start sniping on my Thracian nobles with his slingers. And I have to be really careful about this, because it won't take many volleys to to ensure that my Thracian nobles get absolutely destroyed in melee against his uh, sword followers. It's also going to be very easy for him to stop the charges with Levy Freeman and Heavy Horse. So this, here again, I'm getting smashed by javelins from the Levy Freeman and from the Axe Warriors, so this is not a very, this is not a good ex uh, exchange by me. I'm starting to get a bit worried about these slingers and then my micro is slipping on the edges here. Just giving him, giving him something to do here in the back lines. Ideally, I want to start sniping Heavy Horse, of course. So he's going to start moving with his Celtic Slingers. Uh, while he does that, I'm going to take the opportunity to start, start uh, firing at his Heavy Horse, both here and here. And that's not good for the Heavy Horse, of course. So, well, the Celtic skirmishers are wisely focusing on my Thracian noble general, but since the cavalry is busy over here, I'm going to send in my Thracian horse just to scare away the Celtic slingers for a bit. Pull away, pull back in with my Thracian cavalry, start doing the damage to his heavy horse. Javelin cavalry is so awesome. Haven't killed much yet, but this is doing damage. Uh, over here I just charged his levy freeman from the front and from the back. Then I'm going to pull away. Uh, took some casualties there, but but I just was so so annoyed with these levy freemen. So they are broken. And now he's sending heavy horse up to support his Celtic slingers. I'm going to try to circumvent his heavy horse with my Thracian horse. Redirect the charge into his heavy horse. And this is of course going to allow me to get great charges on his heavy horse if he doesn't pull it away. It's also going to allow me to pour the javelins into the heavy horse. So the heavy horse is not doing well now at all. I'm taking friendly fire here, sure, but it's totally worth it to, uh, destroy, to destroy the heavy horse quicker. I'm able to get my Thracian nobles into the heavy horse, and when they get in here, good night, sweet prince, for the heavy horse. So we should see the heavy horse start dropping very quickly. 
Uh, not a good idea to fire into this blob at this point because that means I'm going to cause friendly fire. The heavy horse is going to start routing. I'm going to send my remaining Thracian horse in to try to stop his oath sorn for just a while. So now his general is hanging back. Charge coming into my uh, Thracian warriors, but they were in the forest. They're going to start doing a lot of damage to the heavy horse now. Over here I'm still fighting with the axe warriors. Bad idea. Charges all across the line. My warriors should do well on the charge against the sword followers and then they're just going to die. But the point here is just doing the damage that I need to do. So heavy horse starting to waver. The axe warriors were defeated in melee by Thracian cavalry which is amazing in and of itself. Sending in my uh, suicide squad of Thracian nobles against his Oathsorn should do a lot of damage on the charge to the Oathsorn, but they are going to get wrecked themselves. So amazingly enough, oh, there, those were Axe Warriors. So yeah, the Thracian warriors were able to defeat the Axe Warriors on the charge. No big surprise there. The Oathsorn is not doing well at all. My Thracian cavalry is free to chase away his skirmishers. He's activating Headhunt on his general. Uh, that's good for me. Of course, because this unit is gone anyway. Now it's go going to take a lot of casualties from the javelins on these uh, on these uh, levy freemen. So I'm, go I'm going to pop Headhunt to do more damage to his Oathsorn. Charge into the sword followers with my Thracian Noble General. My cavalry is free to basically mop up all of his skirmishers. And at this point there isn't much the Boyai army can do. The Boyai lost a lot of men on the charge. My general is in a bit of a tough spot here. So I'm going to uh, start to pop headhunt on him. Uh, he hasn't got the greatest engagement here, but he is destroying the sword followers comfortably. Uh, the Oathsorn general, not doing well at all. The Thracian nobles with headhunt were able to take him down very uh, effectively. So this guy is one charge away from being routed off the field. Rear charge coming in by cavalry. Which means the Thracian nobles are going to get a great charge with their headhunt against the disorganized Old Sorn and the Levy Freeman. My general might die in the center here, but at this point it doesn't really matter much because all that's left on the field for the boy eyes, this depleted unit of sword followers that is getting wrecked. Uh, his general, which is getting wrecked by Thracian nobles. Uh, then it's just a matter of charging in my guys, destroying his general. And that is happening now. And then this blob. I'm just trying to hold it for as long as possible. My general is holding out against the sword followers. Uh, now it's just a matter of surrounding the blob really and getting my guys in to finish off the blob. The blob is attacked in the rear, it's losing decisively, the army loses and that's it for the Boyai army. So the Adrishan Kingdom sure it's not the strongest of factions but look at what the different units potentially can do here. Uh, the Slingers, of course, are a major threat, and against um, against the Boyar, the Thracian cavalry is going to be very important in taking care of uh, skirmishers, and it's also going to be very important in cavalry control. So, uh, doing damage to the cavalry before it engages allows the Thracian horse to do better in melee. Uh, getting the Thracian nobles, getting good charges with the Thracian nobles, is going to be absolutely essential to to uh, allowing you to defeat the sword followers and again spear warriors and axe warriors I would have liked to see some more uh, more Celtic uh, Celtic warrior speed bumps in here maybe even more Levy Freeman speed bumps the oath sword do well of course but against Thracian nobles they're going to take so many casualties that it's it's not really even worth it to engage charging Thracian nobles uh, so this uh, this build I quite like this build against barbarian factions because a lot of uh, heavy horse is going to be charging your Thracian warriors and if you time your Thracian horse charge with the charge of the Thracian warriors then the heavy horse is going to go down super quickly you have the ability to snipe the enemy generals and against generals on foot a build like this can work very very well um, I think I would have struggled a lot more against the build that didn't bring slingers that brought only Celtic warriors and sword followers if the because I have so little infantry I only have um, I only have eight infantry units so for there are seven eight nine there are nine um, ten decent infantry units for the boy eye but if there was something like six sword followers and six Celtic warriors for example uh, then the Celtic warriors would have been able to tie down my entire uh, infantry line, do a lot of damage to it, and 
uh, then I don't think I would have been able to chew through the sword followers there. And of course, taking out the enemy general was super important. Getting the Thracian horse to stop the enemy general and then being able to counter charge him was massive. But overall, this build, this Thracian build, did very well against the uh, Boyai build. It's not a build that I, perhaps not a build that I would have tried competitively because it's it's very easy to shut down if you stop the chargers from the um, Thracian nobles with levy freemen and such. Then it's going to be super easy. But that that's kind of the reason why the Thracian cavalry is there. If the levy freemen are screening four units of Thracian cavalry or even three, then uh, that means that they're not going to be able to perform their speed bump duties. And if they don't screen the cavalry, and if they perform speed bump duties, then all the Adrian Kingdom army here has to do is to go for as many snipes on the heavy horse and the important units as possible before the main engagement starts. So I think the Adrician Kingdom is a super fun faction to play as because it has so distinct weaknesses and so distinct strengths. You're going to have to play uh, a good game and force your opponent to, to make mistakes there. So uh, even against the boy eye, they can work. And some of the reason for that is that against the Adrician Kingdom, a lot of people will immediately think, well, okay, I need a lot of skirmishers. But these, uh, these, bringing these four Celtic Slingers are also a liability because it's going to be so easy to mop them up with the cheap cavalry that um, the Adrian Kingdom can bring. And if you go on the defensive with the Skirmishers, then it's also going to be super hard. But I, I still think that something like six Heavy Horse, six Celtic Warriors, six Sword Followers, uh, and the rest Levy Freeman is going to be the hardest for the Adrian Kingdom to, to um, defeat. Because even though you're your Thracian nobles and your Thracian warriors are going to do well against units like, units like Celtic warriors. If they lose their charge bonus and if they eat a uh, javelin volley from the, even just from the levy freemen and from the, uh, from the um, Celtic warriors, they're going to take a super high amount of casualties and they they're not really going to be able to grind it out uh, in that scenario. But good game, well played to William. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year and strength and honor.